Welcome back to the Story Geeks. This is the Sticks of the Week. I am your host this week, Joe Hozempa. And we are here to my right is Joe D. Today's his birthday, so if you want to wish him a happy birthday. Is your email set up yet or you're not on that yet? I don't think so. If you want to wish Joe D a happy birthday, you go to Joe H at StogieGeeks.com, and I will forward it to his non story geeks email because he's not used to this electronic extravaganza. For a personal email. For Just so you know, the host of the show like runs a security <laughs> show, right? So Absolutely. like you got to get your email. That's, that's it's already point. up. He's giving it to you. It's a running joke. I'm trying to run it as long as I can. <laughs> yeah. Do you not like email? You got to hold on. I'm going to pull a ball here. You're all school body. Oh, right? There Jimbo. you go. Look at that. Yeah. Personal right. email, CSKA76X. At Yahoo.com. Yeah, right. Joe H at StoryGeeks.com. I'll forward it to CKA, whatever, whatever. And then there you go. This is the Sticks of the Week segment. Today is Joe D's birthday. If you're just tuning in, we had uh, did a rum pairing. So if some of the words like Criollo are slurred, uh, I apologize in advance. Oh, it's kicking in for oh, we're, sure. We're, do, we're doing um, some rum pairings. And then we talked a little bit about... A real little bit about birthday cigars and a whole lot of bit about uh, some of the boxing and uh, Conor McGregor extravaganza that's due up. Are you in for a little, little splash? A little splash. All right. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. It's your birthday. It's your birthday. We have just enough rum left to make some old fashions. Ooh. So cool. maybe Paul can make those for the next episode. I think we have, and that's enough, right? Yeah. yeah. For the next episode, because uh, that'd be. It'd be good. So, for the anyway, next so happy birthday to Joe D. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it. I can't it. wait to check the calendar to find out if Story Geeks is on my birthday. See, yeah. I would have like a, if it was my birthday, I'm having like a guitar band, <laughs> some streamers, you know what yes. I mean? I'm decorating the place. But, you know, anyway, happy me, birthday to you. Thanks, brother. Appreciate this it. This is a stick of the week uh, segment. What have you been smoking? I'm going to lead off in the one hole with the La Aurora Puro Vintage 2006. Edición Limitada 111. That's a mouthful. Uh, Ecuadorian Havana wrapper, Brazilian binder, Nicaraguan binder, um, actually, uh, Nicaraguan, Brazilian, and Dominican filler. Um, six and a half by 60 Salomon. $19 price point. I reached out for one of these, uh, one of these guys. I'm trying to touch all the Puro Vintage, and they're all pretty amazing. 18-count um, boxes. There was only 1,500 made. Uh, I absolutely gave it a box split. Uh, chocolate, earth, and pepper. Uh, natural tobacco and spice. Flavor bomb for days. And uh, great complexity. The, uh, the tobacco was from the 2006 crop and debuted at the 2015 Pro Cigar Charity Auction. Um, it's a medium stick. And uh, La Roa was founded in 1903. It doesn't, uh, for me... The Puro Vintage 2003 is still at the forefront. It's still uh, in the one hole, but uh, the six was was pretty tasty as well. You, you can absolutely taste the age. Mm -hmm. where, where did you Stick. did you were right you now. golfing or did you were you sitting down? Or? Uh, I, was, I was especially sitting this time of year. You 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 have to ask those questions. Sitting down you know? right next door. I was just taking that as we said in numerous episodes before. Taking the time in the humidor. That's part of the fun. Unless you you know what you really know what you want. If you have that time, peruse. Find those hidden gems. I stumbled across it, and uh, I had smoked one previous. Really liked it, and uh, scooped them up. Mm. Got a couple more. So you got to learn very, patience very when when shopping, right? Well, when you when you have that time, you're gonna tell them the liquor store story about us choosing rum, <laughs> right? We what was, what was it like? It was like 33 minutes to choose rum, and we only had we only had a little rum section like this to choose from. And the, I'm, the tiniest I'm like, well, window. We can do this, you know, oh, yeah. We had the tiniest window, and we blew it up to, to, to for there. Beautiful thing. And it's the same thing. Where, you know, you don't have to go to a big elaborate smoke shop. You like again. I always tell I always tell my friends or consumers or the listeners is pay attention to what you like and the region that it's from, and then from there you'll be able to. To you know, kind of you know, explore. Also, a little side note: uh, not all sticks are shelved accordingly. Sometimes, <laughs> uh, for various reasons I, I won't get into, you'll have those those hidden gems boxed away on the bottom, the top shelf. Really peruse every nook and cranny of a humidor, and uh, sometimes you'll come, you know you come across those gems. Either that, or one of the things I notice as a consumer, and I, and, and I want to 
take take some time out now that I'm hosting this show here for 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 this segment here is is you know don't be afraid to ask. You know, if you're yep. new, if you're new to cigars and you walk into a humidor, I see this every day that I walk into a cigar shop is people go either in and out right quick and get their go-tos, you know, and I understand if you know what you like and you like and you're that type of consumer, but then they linger. So in other words, they picked it out right quick and you want and they linger. And then, you know, as a fellow patron of a particular cigar shop, doesn't matter, you go there, you start a conversation with them, like, have you ever tried the so-and-so? And they're like, no, I never tried that. And I usually judge it and tailor my discussion to what's in that cigar shop's humidor. Right. You know, showing them a little bit of love. And it's amazing how they walk in with, with the horse blinders. The blinders, yeah. You yeah. know, and they, you know, the, you know, don't be afraid. If you see something and you truly don't know, don't be afraid to ask, say, hey, you know, I liked this cigar, whatever the, the brand name was. And I noticed it came from this region. I mean, it's not hard. You read the label, right? It's on the label. Right. You can Google it on the internet. It's all there, right? And just say, you know, I'm looking, I'm looking for something different, you know. I still do that. And it may have changed. I still since do that. I walk in. There. Nothing drives me nuts when I walk into a humidor and there's a new patron there, a cigar person who's, who's handling. I'm like, hey, what's new? I don't know. Like, no, you're supposed to know. Right. Like, you're supposed to know what's new. Sell me a cigar. You know what I mean? Don't assume that I, I, I know what I want. But I want, you know, like I would have never. Just from being on this show, we could probably do a segment, and this know, might be good for going. the production crew, right? Right, for to kind of make a side note for this for our next note is what cigars have Joe D and Joe H have had, and probably even Paul have had that would have ne- that they would have never came across if it wasn't for a show like this. Oh, right. The list is like, endless. The, but 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 that's what I'm saying. Like Still ongoing. like from my experience. Okay, great. You know, I came on the show, ha- had experience in the retail cigar shop, had owned a retail cigar shop, been involved in the industry. Okay, great. But w- there are a list of sticks and a long list of sticks that I have not had. Just that 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 I have had only from coming on this show. I got to be honest. I want that that listener feedback as well. Yeah. It, it'd be, it'd be, it'd be, that'd be an interesting segment um, for the crew who's, who's uh, doing an awesome job back there. As always. Uh, you know, that'd be an interesting segment because I could literally, you know, we set up like a story of the week and say, wow, this is my first impression when I've had it, when I've had it on the set. And it's much different. I will tell you, it's much different hosting a show and having a cigar than co-hosting with Paul and having right. a cigar. Right. You know, it, it, it's one of those things where, you, you know, you're keeping the, 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 the show going, which explains why we burn through two and sometimes, or three, and Paul burns through two. Absolutely. Yeah, the the cadence of the show. <laughs> to be able to you know. sit in the one hole and carry, mm. uh, it's a different animal. Yeah, it, I feel yeah. Paul's cheated uh, show to show. It isn't, you know, he's not afforded that that extra time. That luxury, because well. sometimes right. I just sit in it, especially if we have like three, four guests, or, or there's five people in a room, you know, you, me, Paul, and two Round guests. Table. And if you, you know, I, happen I, to I just something sit there legit, and, I, yeah, I'm just and we, get, we get caught up in the uh, caught up in the moment, caught up in the cigar. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. I have had, <laughs> wouldn't be a show unless I talked about it, right? I've had the Viaje yes. Exclusivo Robusto, right? Check the box. Uh, <laughs> Viaje, <laughs> check, right? <laughs> I had this in the Robusto size. You are 5x52, okay? Binder filler, Nicaraguan. And wrapper is Nicaraguan Criollo. Criollo. Yes. I got it. Criollo. (laughs) Yeah. After rum, I'm getting better, right? Good man. (laughs) Right? I had it in my head and I lost it, right? So the binder and filler is Nicaraguan. The um, wrapper is Nicaraguan Criollo. Let me tell you something. It starts off, it's got a little pig, a, a yep. little pigtail on it. Mm-hmm. It starts off, you have it subtle, you get a little hint of pepper, right? You start smoking it, and then what I like about it is the hint of pepper stays consistent throughout the cigar. Mm. It doesn't tend to get really, really peppery or tend to, to go overboard. It just stays consistent. Um, subtle pepper throughout. Subtle pepper throughout nice. for what, what, what I got. And I liked it so much, I had it again. There you go. Right? Yep. And uh, just to make sure uh, there with the cigar. I, I mean, 
What can I say? I, I, I am a fan of the brand, uh, so that that's first and foremost. And uh, I had to I had to give it a box split for sure. You know, definitely, Excellent. definitely give it a box split. What did you give your rating on the other one? I, I box split as well. Oh, you give it a box split? Yep. Okay. Well, if yeah. we're checking boxes, Joe, my, my next stick, you know where I'm going. Where, where are you going, Crystal? <laughs> yeah, we are. Here we go. <laughs> one of those situations, uh, absolutely tripped over it in the humidor, spent that little bit of... Uh, a little extra time. I, I, I thought I smoked every Kristoff on the line. Um, I came across the Kristoff Classic Reserva. Yep. Absolutely blew, blew my socks off. Is uh, that the red label? Has the red, is that T, TAA 2015 release. Yeah. Yeah. Man, yeah. man, are they good. And I apologize for everybody listening that may want to jump in uh, next door. I bought them all. Nice. I, I had to be selfish, Joe. They were that good. Do you have one for, for me? Let me tell you. I have a story about I don't that have cigar. it on me, but I got one for you. I have a story about that cigar. Jared, fan of the show, Jared from Christoph. And I remember when he was a rep, and I'm like, why don't they make these so good for everybody? So good. And he's like, you don't understand. You know, it's a TAA, it's a limited release, but he's giving me all the all the talk. I'm like, this is an amazing smoke. And by the way, he gave, it was two, it was about two years ago. I yeah. remember where I was. And I remember, actually, it was my birthday. We did, a, uh, one of my birthday was at a local cigar shop. They actually surprised me, did a surprise birthday Beautiful. and whatnot. And it was at a local cigar shop. And it was great. And I had them. And Jared had gifted me that. Oh, man. You know what I mean? And and so 2015, that would be my, yeah, it was my 40th. Yeah, the, mat, you, the mat's right. Do you your line. Right? Stopped in my tracks. The, the, the first thing I said, now here's what happened. I walked in. Everybody, hey, surprise, happy birthday. All oh, you guys are great, blah, blah, blah. You know, yep. it's great to see my friends, you know, and, 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 and I'm very close to my friends. Awesome, right? And then Jared hands me that stick. So, of course, you hand me a stick. I don't care if there's one on the planet. Right. I'm laying it now, yep. right? That's, yep. just, that's just my demeanor, right? And so I lit it. And the first thing I said, as opposed to thank you, Jared, was why don't they produce these on a regular level? Exactly. This, this is amazing smoke. Yeah. So yeah. obviously you gave it a. I give it a fight, Chuck Norris. Really, <laughs> really. All all, all day. Yep. I, I initially, I, I think I. I was figured you were going to Oasis. I like that you're starting to get a little. You're starting to pull that back. Trying to pull it back, Joe. Nice. Trying nice. to pull it back. I like it. You're taking the play out of my book. Yeah. Right? <laughs> uh, you can't give many people too much love. You know. If, what I mean? if the Byron, <laughs> if the nine, the Byron nineteen is the Oasis for me. Um, as much as I absolutely love this stick, and it's it's right there. It pulled back just just a tiny bit and slotted accordingly. That's that's where it's at. Which is which is no slant on the uh, the cigar itself. Phenomenal um, Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, Nicaraguan Habano binder, uh, Nicaraguan Dominican and Honduran uh, filler as well. Uh, five by fifty two robusto, eight dollar price point. Comes in the twenty count box. There was sixteen left. I took them all. I apologize for being selfish, but they were that good. If you want to trade, <laughs> I have a Viaje Fama Bill hatchet, which you've never had. Done. 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 Hey, making there. deals. Right? Then, then you could I, – I love the Fama Bill hatchet. And by the way, they've been – I've taken some plate out of, out of Paul's book. They've been aging for about six months. Oh, man. There so you they're, go. They're, yes. Well, had, duh, they had to be aged for six right. months. They only come out since October. So, <laughs> and, and, anyway, um, yeah. Uh, some great flavors. Uh, barnyard leather that we were talking about earlier. And uh, some nuttiness, totally smooth. Only a, only a thousand boxes made in each size. Uh, medium full stick, made by Abe Flores down at uh, PDR in uh, Dominican. Mm -hmm. So good. Yeah, I guess so, with so the TAA good. label on that, they've Jared told me the story, and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just, just you should put it in, in, in. A, you know, a, a, they should do something with this stick. It's a, especially the price point. Like you think, okay, exclusive to the TAA retailers, right? right? And uh, only certain retailers could, could have it, right? And um, I actually uh, took a pilgrimage to a shop up in New York, upstate New York, that had them on, on there. And I, and, and I had bought some uh, after I nice. had my birthday stick and all that stuff. And I had bought some, but it's like, you know, it's an $8 price point. And it's a phenomenal stick. Like, why wouldn't you put out something? Now, I understand you got to put out something exclusive for certain things. But Twenty, why? twenty-five dollars all day for the cigar. Absolutely. And don't I, give him I, any I, ideas, I, Joe. I, don't give. No, it's no, 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 it's no, already no. a done deal. <laughs> don't, no, no, no. Keep it, keep it at eight dollars. <laughs> make some money. 
produce a good stick. I'm willing to square off with Chuck Norris. <laughs> <laughs> There's no defense. He's gonna. He's gonna. You know. Yeah. All right. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Mm. What uh, What else you got over there? Well, I'm still enjoying this this Pontigas Heteridge because uh, you're on to the Hechicera. What did you think about that? Joe's smoking the Hechicera Robusto, and since I'm doing the hosting, I'm doing most of the talking, so I'm still on the uh, Pontigas Heteridge. But what did you think about that? Did you have it with, with, with the rum yet? No, I'm, I'm just enjoying this thing straight up. I, I wanted to uh, want to see where it was at without any, uh, any alcohol at first. Mm. Really, really uh, just by feel, it, it's almost like a uh, like a billy club or a nightstick. This thing is rock solid, but packed. Yeah, packed. Yeah, uh, perfect draw, great flavor. It's a pretty good stick right now. I to be honest, I, I've never heard of this. Yeah, I got that in the bottom left hand corner of Paul's humidor. <laughs> so if you're looking for some more, there Noted. are there are some there. Okay, uh, which means that if it's <laughs> Bottom, <laughs> it's probably you know. Is Paul still in the house? Because if that, I don't know. Because I'm I've given I've I've given I've given Paul a couple of sticks. I've noticed they've made it to the middle, mm. and I'm like, huh. If they made it to the middle and it's the bottom, and I gave it to him about a month ago, he didn't get to it yet. You know, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to to meet and do some stuff with that. Awesome. You know, but yeah, it, uh, the Hechicera, like I said, it's one of, it's one of those sticks when they first came out. You know, typical story. When they first came out, I was like, "Yeah, it's all right. But now, the, they're, they're, they're. I have not seen this stick in any shop I've been to in Rhode Island. Really? And I there was I one. I pretty much go to most of them. Yeah, there was one that had all of them. Okay. When they first came out, it well locally in Rhode Island, it was Hamanos when it was under the previous gotcha. ownership. Yep. Uh, they had they had all the hedge series. They were there, and, and it was it was good. That 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 I know of. Pleasantly man. surprised. Yeah. Yeah, and then you know, I'm I'm sure now shops don't have that because again, it's one of those sticks. They probably put it on closeout and yep. it, it, it it blew out and and did its thing. Despite but. that that really dark profile, it's uh, it's kind of like a a solid medium right now. It's mm. nice. I, yeah, I mean, I'm early on, may uh, kick up a notch, but it's uh, uh, it, it's pleasant right now. Yeah, I'm going back to Paul Sumador and digging out one more of these for sure. <laughs> the, 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 this. This pot of heterage is, is don't tell him. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, right. Don't tell him. Nobody at home. Don't text him. What? <laughs> um, Avo, Synchro, Ritmo, Toro. Six, tried it. Six by fifty four. I've been trying to seek this out. Nobody, nobody seems to have it. That nah, turquoise you gotta, wrapper. You got to roll out with me. I want. I want to hear what you got for an you assessment got, you, on this. You got to roll out with All me. All right. This is, uh, you know. Um, it's funny because we're trying to hunt this thing down. It's funny because when when you talk to the shop. The this is the third uh, release of the Avo Synchro series. Yes, which the Avo Synchro series went against the grain. My words, went against the grain with the blends of um, what Avo has been known for. And this is also this was not blended by Avo. I don't want to steal your thunder if if that's what you're going to touch. No, on. this is this is the this is the first stick that is put out post right. his his passing yep. uh, over there um, with that. However. In regards to the stick, uh, it's available in four different sizes. Uh, you have a Robusto, you have a Toro, you have a Special Toro. It's called the Special Toro, which is 6 by 60 Okay. I had the regular Toro, which was, I just said it, but uh, 5 by 50 and Then you have the uh, Torpedo Largo, which is uh, 7 by 54 Okay. Okay. Uh, you have a... Uh, Ecuadorian wrapper leaf, and it also contains Mexican binder and filler tobaccos from Nicaragua, Peru, Brazil, Honduras, and the, the Dominican Republic. Touch them all. Okay. Yep. So, um, its cigar is a it comes. It's box pressed. It's jammed, packed with. Not only flavor, but this was the first cigar that I have lit in a long time where I was afraid to retrohale. Really? When I lit it up. Okay. Like, right. I was like, whoa. I lit it up, and I was like, okay. We're, 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 <laughs> this is Is this it. thing on? This yeah. is, is, you know. And then, um, you, you again, you have your uh, South American, um, your South American rapper that's encompassing in this there too so you have a lot going on in that cigar uh there uh let me just repeat 
those for you. So you have you have um, your Ecuadorian leaf, South American uh, wrapper, which has a Mexican binder and filler tobaccos. And the filler tobaccos are from Nicaragua, Peru, Brazil, Honduras, and the Dominican Republic. Yikes. Box pressed for a new release cigar. It comes right out of the gate swinging. Which only tells me that if it's got that much going on in there, right. these are really going to be, should be, in theory, cigar theory, right? Our cigar yep. theory. They should be phenomenal with age because they don't have age on them. True. Right? They, yep. they're, they're here. Um, you can get them uh, locally. You can get them over at any of the two regencies if you ever wanted to try one. Um, I had the Robusto size. And I had the Toro size. Probably not going to go to that Super Toro at 60. I'm, gotcha. not, I'm not 60 box pressed. See, I shy away from box press, even though I shouldn't. I don't like the way it feels in my hand. I I've too. expressed that yep. with, with different shows. Yeah, I like to twirl it around but, a little bit. But, but yep. let, me, let me tell you something. This cigar out of the gate. So when I was about halfway through, mm-hmm. all right, because when you first light it, you're like, okay, whoa, like what? <laughs> It, like what's going on? Where are like, my pants? It's like being a little kid and walking into like <laughs> like a carnival. You're like, I want to go there. I want to go there. What's going on? What's going on? Right? Yeah. You're, yep. like, you're like, oh my god, this is like system overload. This is, it's total system overload. Yep. Right? Great, great analogy. You know, and and you're there, and you have it, and then about halfway through, I was like, okay, I got to get the retro. Right? Oh. Got to get the retro, and I got it, and I was like, wow, like it's it's amazing, amazing cigar. I gave it a box worthy. Okay. Uh, there. Um, because the reason why I gave it a box worthy is because I'm convinced if it impressed me that much over time, it's six months from now, gotcha. it yep. should come into whatever. Now, I don't know much about the settling process of if you have that much of a complex cigar That's going, a lot going on. on right there. It's a lot going on. Yeah. You know what I mean? But theory and logic from just following along from this show would tell you that. It, it 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 should get into that maybe Chuck Norris maybe Oasis level, oh, man. which is He's why I'm giving it. You ramp it up my curiosity. Yeah, it, it, it's amazing. Like Joe, I got a question for you. Yes. All right. So, yes, I was afraid for the retro hair. <laughs> that is that is complete. Uh, that that was my first thought of the cigar. What, was I'm afraid the retro hair this <laughs> thing. Like you know, one of my absolute best buddies. Um, he uh, the cigar mentor uh, to me. The guy is an avo freak. Mm-hmm. He, he's the be all end all for the Avo. So I was curious where he was with this. Absolutely loved it. Pretty much on par with everything they're saying. The back third of the cigar for him uh, came across a little, a little strong, a little harsh. Mm-hmm. Uh, but and that, that was that was his assessment. He smoked a couple. You know, he's he's everything Avo. However, but getting back to what you're saying, with that time, age, tame it down just a little bit. I can now now getting the other side the other half of the story mm-hmm. another take I can see with that that would absolutely be a uh, a perfect marriage with it tame it right down into a perfect scenario did mm-hmm. you, you you were able to get any of that uh, no if your friend was sitting here I would or when you see a friend yep. ask him did he guillotine cut it or did he V cut it because I V cut okay if I have a choice yep. it's V or no if I have a choice it's bullet. Right, like straight up bullet, okay. usually anything. Some things don't allow the bullet. Some things don't there. My second go-to is a uh, V cup, okay, or a cat eye, however I, you want to call it. I think there. it went guillotine or uh, if, a bullet. It definitely wasn't a V cut. If he went, if he went bullet, logic would tell you because his box pressed. You have a lot of tar build up towards the end. Okay, he could have been getting that. If he went guillotine and kept lighting it, yep. which you know, if you're like me and you talk a lot, yep. whether you're on Story Geeks or not, you're always lighting your cigar, right? Because remember a couple of shows back, we talked about some of the, like, the long ash contests where you're not right. supposed to keep lighting it, right. et cetera. Yeah, it depended on that. And I, and I, would, and I would ask your friend to, to you know, if, if he did it, do it with the V-cut and um, try to baby it a little bit so you lighten it less. Because I found it right to the nub. Absolutely positively enjoyed it. Wasn't harsh. I mean, when you first start it, to me, when you first, first start it, again, 
I was hesitant to retro hail this thing, right? So it, 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 I, I was like, you know, whoa, it, it's got a lot going on. It's complex. Right. So I can see if they guillotined it, how and or kept lighting it as well, how it, it, it could turn. I'm out. really excited and happy you, you had this as uh, as one of your sticks today because uh, it's got the direct line to Avo's son, who's going to be a guest on the show. Uh, oh, is he? In a matter of weeks. Yeah, so you're more privy to that stuff. Uh, who's gonna, <laughs> who's, 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 no, but I, I, yeah, you know, I definitely want to try it before it comes on the show. I, I'm partial to uh, the domain and the Fagata. Those are my, my, you know, my two, uh, my two go tos for Avo. But I, so Avo's son yeah, scheduled to come on the show. Matter of weeks. Yep. Really? Yep. Wow. See, I'm, I, I like, I, I like to treat every Story Geeks episode like a surprise to me. So I, <laughs> I choose to, you know, know what it is on that day. Right. You know what I mean? There's not a lot of real show prep other than the sticks of the week for me personally. I like to just express my feelings out to the listeners and, and you take whatever knowledge I'm giving you at, 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 at hand. You, you handle that more with, with, with the crew and all of that Try. stuff. For me, it's like a surprise. <laughs> Who's coming in today? Let's talk. You know, It'd be great. So I, he's I scheduled if, to come in. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if Paul, uh, Paul has spoken to him specifically. I know Paul's interviewed uh, Avo in the past, I believe. And yeah. uh, that Armenian descent maybe uh, you know, could be make for a good good segment. So yeah, yeah. We'll yeah finalize the details, but it's going to be a great episode. I think it's going to be a great episode. And, it, and it'd be great to, to talk about the future of the company. You there you know go. I mean, Absolutely. I mean, you yeah. know, especially Better questions. I, I want your take. I want your business. Uh, well, the business take. Acumen. I mean, the business take. It's a, you know, it, it's a great question. I mean, you know, you 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 have to take care, regardless of what cigar you produce out in the market. I truly feel that you need to uh, stand behind your blend, right. and you need to stand behind your brand. That bread and butter, getting back and, to what you were saying and, before. And you need to support that. And, and you right. know, this Avo Cinco series, I mean, you know, I, I'd, I'd love to be a, a fly on the boardroom oh, yeah. when cigar companies say, okay, we have done this with success. Avo, they have a rich tradition in heterage. Yep. They've been an amazing both for the retailer, right. for the consumer. Um, they've produced cigars that people consume and love people consume for special occasions so it, it, it's up there but now with with the passing of of uh, avo senior you, you you need to to um you know f protect the brand but i also think that the brand also it's good for them to go through an exploration phase as well that's where i'm at joe i'm wondering you if know? they're going to close ranks on you know what is typically uh been a major producer for him, or take that new uh, new avenue. And I, I think this Ritmo is right where right where they need to be if they you know they're looking to. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, uh, it's a third release of the Synchro series, right. and to my knowledge, and I'm only going on uh, cigar retailers who give me their feedback um, from the cigar, cigar shops that I frequent. It's 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 been a success. You know what I mean. So yep. even though they've stepped out of their Avo box. And they've produced a series. I mean, the, the, pff, you can't go through a, a, a day or a week if you frequent shops without them bringing up an Avo, a, a Avo Synchro something or other. You right, know what I mean? Right. And now with three releases, and now with this one, this is a big one. Like, this is a big release It's a big here. deal. Uh, and and sure. you got a lot. It's a complex cigar, and you got a lot going on. I'm wondering why it's not in more shops right now. I, I, I you know, for... For the flavor bang and the hype behind it, I'm wondering why it's somewhat limited uh, in this state. I, I'm not sure, you know, across the board, mm -hmm. um, but pretty curious. There's a lot of questions. We well, have you, you, you bring up a good point of why it's not in a lot of shops. When you're dealing with an older brand, such as an Avo or a Podigus or a Padron, you have what you call access points okay. for the retailer. And... If you can't meet the access point or you're not in the geographical area of someone who has a proven track record with AVO, you got to look at the environment that we're in. Here in Rhode Island, we have 34, maybe 37. I don't know. The, the, it's like the stock market. It changes every day. Oh, it's yeah. like the stock market here where yep. you talk about cigar shops and cigar lounges where, you know, Joe D and myself and, and Paul – are uh, in, we're native Rhode Island. We're in a Rhode Island-based 
culture. And you can drive through Rhode Island within 45 minutes, no traffic. And, you know, if one retailer is, say, located here, and then five miles is another retailer, but in between is the other retailers, and we just happen to like the in-between shops. Collectively, you don't, we cover you don't a lot know. of ground. We're just you, three you guys. In, uh, you don't know. I mean, it, it could be an access point. Yeah. It could be an access point as far as entry level, what you need. Um, you know, some blends and brands are out there still protecting the retailer um, in regards to the geographical coverage. And then others um, are just selling uh, cigars to anybody right. and anybody who wants to purchase them online. And, you know, and it's, it's I'm sure that business decision is tough enough right. because you've got to look at it from the retailer perspective. If... 45 people shop here, and then five miles away, they open up another shop, but only 20 shop. Those 45 might flock, but at the end of the day, Avo, in this example, still sells the 45 boxes. Right. They might make an executive decision to not sell it to specific. Yeah, be one of those classic faces. He doesn't have to, you don't have to reach out to every single You don't have to. You're in a different ball game, right. as opposed to if you're an up-and-coming cigar person from a business perspective. Yeah, you want to um, beat down as many doors. You, you got to beat down yeah. as many bo- doors because it's a numbers game. You know, I think it's a race to fifty, right? This is my number. This is not coming from any other podcast. This is not coming from any other. Uh, I think it's a race to fifty facings when it comes to the shop. So, in other words, if you release a cigar and you're in fifty shops, you you got something going on because if you're in one shop. Or two shops, and then there's a huge gap state wise. Right. What 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 are you really getting into? I think fifty is a is a great number. And believe me, I mean this would be this would be a great conversation. I would love to have a Story Geeks episode of like a, a classic facing, say like Avo Sun and like a Mike Bellity right. and like maybe like a Pete John, like do a multiple a multiple um, segment because they all produce sticks that we talk about and consume right. and stogie geeks like us or stogie geeks like our listeners would, would would love to consume but from a business perspective you know some of some businesses get the luxury of picking and choosing where they're going to put their shot where they're going to put their sticks and others don't get the luxury because they're they might be on that race to 50 of brand recognition right. you right. know what i mean so so you know it depends on where, where, where you're frequenting you know what i mean you know, I, I, that's why I always say when I travel to a cigar shop, I judge it by what I want to smoke. Right. You know what I mean? If I feel like this X brand, then I'm going to go here or here because I know that they carry more of that option of what I'm going to have. You know what I mean? Yep. That's just my perspective uh, with, with that. But the Avo, getting back to the Avo Synchro series, uh, it's an amazing series. Uh, I think they, dov- they, they it, it's, a, it's a great example of when you can step out of your traditional business plan and still cater to a, a new market. Now, it's funny because when I had this stick, I spoke to a couple of the old-timers who frequent that shop. And they're like, the stick's too complex. It's not Avo. You know, it's too, it's too, it's got Nicaraguan. It's a, you know, and they get all, they get all hung up on the complexity. The and then, no, they, they just, the they, they like Avo in its traditional sense. Which is fine. But business logic would tell Avo and company that, hey, we have this whole other target audience here. Absolutely. We can cater to them oh, too, yeah. which I think when you're at that type of decision making in, 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 in any industry, it doesn't have to be cigars, you, 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 really, you, you really can pick and choose. You know? It's yep. amazing. You know? Beautiful thing. Moving on, let's get to the uh, – I smoked the Padron 90th Maduro – in the Tubo, uh, the 1926. Uh, this stick has eluded me, but uh, I reached out and, and had one recently at uh, one of our favorite one of our favorite shops. Um, five and a half by 52. It's the uh, Nicaraguan Maduro. I'm wrapper. sorry, what was it? Padron what? Padron 90th. Okay, yep. 90th Maduro in uh, the Tubo. Uh, it was like a red Tubo. Uh, Nicaraguan binder and filler. $27 price point, box of 10. Uh, the natural is available as well. 
So able to pull uh, some earth and chocolate. Um, all the box press, with the exception of uh, the 90th, uh, came with no cedar in the uh, the tubo, just uh, the cellophane. Um, released at the 2016 IPCPR, all tobacco is aged five years, full stick. And this was uh, also worth noting, this is the first tubo offered by Padron. Um, all that said, <laughs> uh, this was a try one for me. At a $27 $27 price point. Uh, now let's get into the other half. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I'm swinging a big blade today. Uh, combustion issues, had to relight it four plus times. Um, the stick became harsh and bitter. And I'm thinking, thinking back now, you know, part of that probably has to do with the, uh, the combustion issues I was, uh, you know, I was experiencing. You know, uh, this was the first, you know, first stick I, I've tried of the, the 90th, but I, I, it had, you know, all, all the hype was set, comfortable chair, beautiful shop. I wasn't drinking at the time. You spend $27 on a, on a cigar, you, you don't want to... Um, you want to ruin it with, uh, you know, certain alcohol, straight up uh, water, and not not a fan, not a fan for me. Now, conversely, the the sixty four is an, is pretty much you know one of the greatest things on earth, and mm-hmm. I'd migrate to uh, all day twice on Sunday, but for me, this this particular stick uh, didn't resonate well. Mm. Where'd you get it? I don't want to say. No, because the reason why I'm not I'm, <laughs> I'm not here to put the place on blast. Yeah, yeah. The, the 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 reason why I'm asking is because I'm going to ask us to go down a, a thirty dollar journey. <laughs> right? I'm going because because I mean you know when, when you have a company like I have never had an issue with combustion or you know a stick uh, being plugged or any issues. Whatsoever with this one particular shop, um, I know they, you know there is a great amount of uh, TLC that goes in, sure. know, involved. So it, that that was not the issue. Um, I probably would have migrated to uh, the natural, as I have with you know most padrones in the past. I've never had a single issue with any other padrones in the past. Right. This time with Maduro, with the 90th, uh, in the tubo, you know, you know it. I don't know. Mm. Combustion should may, maybe maybe get a factor in the box press. Maybe the lack of cedar it was just in the cellophane. I, I don't know, but it's worth uh, it's worth trying again. Twenty seven bucks, but I will try it and uh, like to pr- report back within six months and and yeah. uh, see where I'm at. That's where I'm at today. Right. I I, I really find uh, even even. I, I, you know, I, I'm real. I've never given a uh, a try one for any uh, any stick, even. Sure. Y- you know, um, it's difficult. This is difficult. It, it, it's difficult, John. <laughs> I can uh, I you, can, sense you can see the, the anxiety. <laughs> I'm, I'm moving in the chair. I'm squirming. That uh, that's where I'm at. Well, so. let me tell you something. I mean, you you got a couple of things that could go on over there, um, depending on the shipping process and the. Two, I mean, this is not the time of year where something could combust on you. These but, cigars do not sit on the shelf. You know, it, it's a quick turnover. Sure. So, f- absolutely. Well, this is what I could, this is what I be. think you should do to to do the brand justice. It's not like you've tried something. My God, it's like when you sit in the host chair, you kind of act like a host, right? right. It's amazing, right? Um, it, it, what I'm trying to say is. Th- they've gone through such a rich tradition in history. I would ask the cigar shop owner, who you want to remain anonymous, if they've gone through any of those issues. Because if they that, did, to do the brand justice, it would be a bad batch. Because that's good, one of those. Good call. Cigar- I'll be there tonight. That, and no, that, because and that's, that's one of those cigars yep. that that people would use for a special occasion. Absolutely. Or, you know, Father's Day just passed, but, right. you know, if something comes up and there's a special occasion, you, they might purchase that in a tubo. It's got a $27 price tag to it. It's not one of those cigars that should ever do that. If you told me you smoked that, I would have never guessed that your review would even have went that way. I wouldn't either. You know what I mean? I would ask the cigar shop owner there. This way, that's free, right? And then I would ask when they're getting more and when you want to go through um, that process again. Right. I'll join you because I've never had that one. 
Okay. You know what I mean? So from my perspective, and if they both blow up, then, hey, we're on to something, you know. Right. You know, maybe we'll offset it. We'll go buy a scratch ticket, <laughs> right, and then go buy a, t- a cigar. This way, if we at least win, it'll cut the cost of the scratch. Yeah. That's the Italian in me going we'll on play. there. Right? We'll, 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 we'll make a day out of it. Some nice. rainy day this summer, we'll, we'll go back there and then redo that. Just, just let me know. Yep. Uh, time wise, because I because I think you know when, when you when you review a cigar like that, you you gotta kind of it it carries on history, and I would never think that they would produce something that would be rushed. I'm not gonna try it anywhere else. I want to try it back at the shop. Yeah. Repeat the same uh, yeah, same situation. Yeah. So, you know, and let's see where we're at. Yep. Yep. Because I mean, the, the, again, they're handmade. Um, they're shipped. By uh, UPS or FedEx. Um, I have friends that work for UPS and FedEx, so, uh, you know, <laughs> right? right? So, you know, you, you could have got a bad batch, could have got a bad one. Um, you know, it's one of those brands that, you know, I think as a Stogie Geeks um, representative, which you and, and myself are, that we should probably re, 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 revisit I believe they, so, they number each and every stick, and I, I do have it. You know, if uh, the parties would be are interested, but yeah, we're, we're gonna go through, repeat the process, and yeah. see what we come across. Speaking of mediocre, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. We go, uh, Joey. Uh, I I had the hold on. Let me get the exact thing. I have had the. See, I was gonna do something different, but I'm tailoring it. There you go. Nice. Um, I had on the fly the La Cia Tobacco Black Toro. Um, this is a six by fifty. Uh, I had this cigar, you know, it comes in four different sizes. comes in the little guy, the double Toro, the Toro, and the Robusto uh, there. Um, Wrapper is Ecuadorian Habano. Binder is Nicaraguan. And your filler is Dominican Lajero with Nicaraguan. And then you also have... uh, some Brazilian Maltafina in there, and American Dark Fire. Okay. Which now I'm like, okay, if anybody knows what American Dark Fire is, Joe H at StogieGeeks.com, and I'd I'd love to to get educated on that because it's it's one of those sticks I came across and I tried and I was like, wow, did this got pretty decent ratings, yep. and um. I've never had it before, and when I had it, I was like, "Meh, it was all right." I, I gave it a try one. I mean, Meh. you know, I, I and and I mean, I don't know. I mean, you know, it's one of those things. Like when 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 I look at a stick and I'm like, "Oh wow, it's got something that I've never even heard of in it," yep. and it's got Nicaraguan. It might be a go-to for me yep. and for my palate, but uh, had some pepper taste had there, and then one third into it, it just Mild, flat, really tape, tape it right out. It tapered right out. Okay. Like, I don't know um, what that process is, but uh, definitely want to do a little bit more uh, exploring as to what American Dark Fire uh, filler mm. is. I've never heard that. You know, yeah. it's um, that's where I'm at. So, okay. like I said, I gave it a try. One fits there. The price point, you're in that six or seven dollar. Yep. If you go online, it's even cheaper. See, that's one of the things I I, I judge too. I'm not a fan of cigar companies that sell a ton cheaper. My word, a ton cheaper. I'm going. I'm sticking with that one. Right. I've had rum. I'm good. Huh. Right. Uh, a ton cheaper than when they would in a retail store. Okay. So if you go in a retail yeah, yeah, yeah. store, you're at that seven, maybe eight. If you go online, you're in that five. Dare I say you can find them for four. Yeah, it poses that question. And, why and, why and, we... Uh, and it's just right. like, you know, I don't know. I don't... I, I, I think that the retailer... It's not the responsibility of the retailer to do the monitoring. It's the cigar company. But, you know, I'm kind of like... It, it, to me, to me, as a small business owner, it just raises a flag yep. um, with that. And, the, and there are a ton. And that would be another 
Story Geek segment for Absolutely. the, for for the day, crew sure. if you want to write it down uh, for, for, for some of those things, uh, you know, in, in regards to future episodes. Like, you know, it's – I think that it should be all price protected uh, in, re in, in regards to yep. online versus Agreed. because it, there is a battle there. But, you know, the people with the sword and shield representing the brands – are the retailers. Right. So it drives me nuts when a retailer is not protected um, via online stuff. Now, it wasn't a blowout. It's just these are available that low of a price point on a regular basis. Right. You know? And I just, I, it just kind of turns me off. But it was gifted to me. It was gifted to me by my friend over on the golf course. I was like, oh, wow, cool. I, yeah, I've always wanted to try one of these, you know. I never tried one in a retail shop because I knew they were online. Yeah, exactly. At that price point. Yep. So I kind of like, you know, I didn't go out of my way to get it. But, again, I was like, eh, you know, let me try it. And I gave it a try one. If it's out there, go for it. I wouldn't seek it out, um, my opinion. Beautiful. I'm going to go uh, back to back on here, if you don't mind. I'm not what sure. negative or no, oh, we, we just no back to back reviews? I, All right. <laughs> I, I don't know if we're up against the time wise. But, no, we're uh, good. We're good. La last week, the uh, Paul Gamarian uh, that Paul asked. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, Reserva Exclusiva Gourmet Series, uh, Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper, Dominican binder, Ecuadorian and, and Dominican filler. Ten dollar price point, five sizes. I smoked the uh, five and a half by forty six Corona Extra. Uh, absolutely love this stick. Wasn't able to uh, talk about it too much on the uh, the show. We're you know we're busy. We're wrapped up, but I'm giving it a box split all day. Uh, nuttiness, natural tobacco, and a little bit of sweetness. And uh, ten years of age on all the uh, tobacco, medium full, and uh, limited production that was rolled in uh, 2001. That's absolutely a stick. I'm gonna I'm gonna seek out for sure. And uh, I haven't seen too many of them, but that's one. Of, that's one that's on the list. I want to see what else the uh, you have to offer. Um, well, a couple things. Good yeah. luck seeking out that stick. Yeah, locally. Right. Yep. Uh, Paul had elaborated on that on the on the last couple of episodes uh, with that. Um, my take on that stick, again, that's a classic example of a stick that I would never have before the my experience here on the Stogie Geeks. Right. Right. Yep. And it's one of those sticks where. Like the Potagus heterage, in my opinion, it stops you. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It but it doesn't stop you like, whoa. It stops you like a, like a mini whoa, right? I guess I could say that, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, a, like, a, like, like, wow, they got something going on here. It's a good stick. Yep. It's a really, it's a really, really good stick. Um, like I said, it's one of those sticks that, that I would, would not have had the opportunity to try because retail-wise, they're, they're not around here. Um, you have to seek them out, and you have to be in the know from, from there, I guess. Um, I don't know what they've done marketing-wise or if they want to continue or what, what the story is. But uh, it's one of those sticks that, you know, I, you gave it a fiver? Yep. Box split. Oh, box split. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd give it a box split yeah. for sure. You know, and, and the ones you've had from Paul have been aging for a while. True. Yeah. As, as well um, there. But there were some retailers that were here in in, in – our section that they don't they, they they don't do them anymore right you know they yep. don't have them and uh i don't know if it's they're not around sales reps not around i don't know what the story is but yeah i would definitely give it a box split for sure cool good stick my uh my last one um uh, what particular shop i was in the uh the shop owner absolutely loved these uh really built the cigar up and all all sorts of hype uh couldn't wait to get into it and Sometimes when that happens, you know, there's a, a little bit of a letdown. Uh, yeah, that was the case here. Uh, the Oscar Habano with the green wrap. Yeah. I've not, I've not had it. This is the first time. Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, Honduran binder, Nicaraguan and Honduran long filler. Uh, $12 price point, three sizes. There's 11 in a box. That's box, that's box pressed? Is that the one? That, no, no, no. It's got the Candela wrap. I'm sorry. Candela wrap. Yeah. They, they have the Oscars that I think it's 2012. Yes. That, yep. Yeah. That those are box pressed. They have the Candela, the green Candela wrapper yes. in there. Yep. yep. Okay. Uh, smoked the five by fifty Robusto. I absolutely gave it a try. One uh, natural tobacco barnyard, and it was salty as all hell. Um, 
I find it had a tight draw with some, you know, really uh, dryness in there. Uh, previously, Nicaraguan tobacco was not used uh, as a filler at the Oscar uh, Valadares Tobacco and Company. Uh, this is the first time they used that, um, wrapped in uh, candela tobacco leaf. Not a not a fan. I, I I'm partial to the uh, the Oscar Sumatra. I don't know if that played into it. I I, I was really excited to uh, try it and all the hype behind it. And Oscar Sumatra, the original one that had the original leaf Le- leaf by Oscar. Yeah, with yep. with this yeah this Habano. Because the leaf just, by uh, Oscar when they first awesome. came out, they had the Sumatra, the Corojo, yep. the Maduro, and the Natural. Correct. All right, and yep. then so you're a fan more of a fan of that. More of yeah the leaf yep. by Oscar. This is just the. Uh, the Oscar. Uh, Oscar. Right. Yep. yep. It's the Oscar. Uh it's what type of what type of wrap is on that? It was uh Ecuadorian uh Havana wrapper. Yeah, it's got the Ecuadorian Havana wrapper, but in instead of in lieu of cellophane, they wrap it with the candela. Correct. Um and you said what was the word you used? It wasn't salt was it salty? Salty. Yeah, it was salty. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was uh I don't think that has uh, anything uh, to do with the candela wrapper, but I did notice that when the Leaf by Oscar came out first with those four blends. Really, really dry. And Hit it out of the park. They, they okay. totally, they did a wonderful job with that um, there. And then um, now they, they have a 2012 series. Um, it's got different color wrappers off the top of my head. It's got a yellow one and a red one and another color. Okay. They're box pressed. And then they also came out with that one as well. Yep. Um, the regular Oscar, and I just think that the original series was was slightly better. I agree for yep. sure. Yep. You know, and you gave it a try one. Gave it a try one. Yeah, you gave it a try one. So which, which I hate doing it. It really it, it pained me to do that. I and uh, fortunately, unfortunately, this is you know the first episode I've I've done so far that I've given it a try one. I've given two try ones now uh, in this one episode. Uh, <laughs> Just See, we're on the opposite side of the spectrum because I've given one Oasis in six months. Right, right. <laughs> and, 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 and you've, you've had a couple of try ones. Speaking of try ones, try, why don't you try some rum? Finish out this, <laughs> this segment here. I'm going to try the facilities in about two seconds when we wrap up. That's what I'm Is that say. why you wanted to do double? Yeah. Oh, yeah. whoa. <laughs> but oh, I, I, think, I never took up I think I could possibly skip out and you know, leave uh, just the one seat here. Is that what you want to do? Or you want me to, you want me to give one more? Or are you, can you hold it? I'll talk quick, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you do a bunch of rum samplings. Well, it would is not, there a man diaper on the other side of the wall? It would wall, not be a asking. show unless I talked about Tatuaje, right? <laughs> right. So I had. Uh, I'll be quick in this one. I had the Tatuaje Reserva Robusto, five and a half by fifty. Um, binder filler is Nicaraguan. Um, the wrapper is Nicaraguan sun grown broadleaf. Um, what can I say? I mean, you know, you got a dock, broadleaf, pepper, Nicaraguan tobacco. Goes great. I think it would go excellent with rum. There you go. Uh, right, Tie it all together. I there think it would go good with some of this uh, Thomas Two rum that we did here. And with that being said, thank you for listening to Stogie Geeks. We'll see you next week. <laughs>